In this video tutorial, we're going to show how to combine several single level models from Adapt Builder into a global model um, or a multi story model also in Adapt Builder. So, in this uh, example, we basically have three levels level two, three, and four, and those are individual models, and we want to combine them into a global model. So, the first thing we'll do, and I'm, I'm going to be using Adapt Builder 2018 for um, this video. This will also work in version 2017. The, the icons and the tools might be categorized differently or located differently, but the process is the same. So I'll first go ahead and launch the program. And um, in Builder 2018, uh, I have Edge open with Floor Pro, PTRC, Design Scope, and US Units. If I want to change those, I can select this arrow down and change these. So this this is sufficient for what we're trying to do. I'll say OK. Inside of Builder 2018, we're going to use um, the model option and we're going to use Story Manager. This is in the build menu in version 2017. And I'm just going to rename and add the levels that I need here. So I'm going to add one level. We're going to call this level four. We're going to Let's go ahead and update that. So I'll update that. We'll call this one level level three. And then we have um, level two. Okay, and I'm assuming in this case that all of the story heights are 10 feet. If they're different, you need to make sure you model the, the correct story heights here. So the bottom we're going to call just uh, base. Okay, so we'll reassign and we'll, we'll reassign the existing levels and just make sure we have the proper level assignments in this global model. And I'll go ahead and close that and I'll just do a file save as. So we'll save this model. And I'm going to call this global uh, global model. Save. Okay, I'm now going to open uh, the individual models that we're going to be importing just just to review those so we'll go ahead and open two three and four I'll do two first in this particular model there's a CAD file that's turned on in the background so I can go to um, visibility group library and just turn off um, turn off these CAD files and I'm left really with the let's say the default I'll go to the default view. I'm left here with the the main structural floor, this particular floor. You can see there's actually diagrams that are shown. I'll, I'll turn those off also. This can be done using the um, red eye glasses or called, formally it's called result display setting. So I'll go ahead and I'll clear those results and say OK. And you can see that at this particular level being level two, we have columns below the slab. So that's important to note. We have columns below the slab here. I'll save that. Um, if I open up the next level above that, level three, again, I have columns below the slab. So if you have columns above and below the slab, then when you import, you really only have to import the uh, columns every other level starting at the base level. Otherwise, you're going to have double counting and overlapping of columns. In this case, because we always have levels below only, we're going to import everything in terms of the components for that particular level. So finally, the, um, the last level we'll import is level 4. And again, this has a CAD file. I'm going to turn this CAD file off also. So I'll go back to visibility, turn off this CAD file. I'll go back to my default display and this is actually shown as shaded so I'll turn off the shading just toggle between solid and wireframe here and I'll save that and this just helps kind of go back to the bare bones of visibility in terms of the structure in these individual levels okay so now what we're going to do is I'm going to create an input file for each single level and I'll start here with level 4 I'll kind of work backwards so I'll go to file um, import or excuse me file export IMP it's a similar process in 17 and we're gonna call this level 4 
Okay, and I'll go back and I'll open level three. File, uh, export. And I, I could have done this in each instance of having these levels open previously, but we're just reopening them now. Okay, so that's saved, and then finally level two. Okay, and I'll go back and open my global model. Now in my folder structure for this project, let me navigate to that. You can see that I have three input files. This contains all of the data for those individual levels. We're going to use the bottom left column as our reference point when we import the, um, the files. So we'll go to uh, Builder. I'll go to a plan view and notice that the active plane that we're working on, and I'll circle this, is call, currently called level 2. So we need to import um, the IMP for level 2 into this particular level, level 2. So we'll go to File, Import, Level 2. We're going to import everything. So we're actually, we're not going to create a, a new model, I just want to update this level. Okay, if I go back to create new model, you can see there's different things shown here. If I update level, some of those things drop out. Here we only have columns and walls. So because this level only contains one level, it's okay to use the option to create level. I just wanted to show the difference between this and this. And so we're going to import level current plane. By default, when you create a new model in the program, in Builder, a single level model, the, the first elevated plane is called current plane, the top is called top, and the base is really called bottom plane. So levels 2, 3, and 4 are all modeled referencing this current plane. We have a slab, and then we have columns below, maybe you know a wall below. Nothing is happening between current plane and top. We saw that there were no columns or walls extending above. So we want to model and import current plane. That's the um, important thing here. So we're going to we're going to import <coughs> current plane, and I'll turn off merge similar slabs. This is not as important when we're working within builder files. Okay, the the reference plane is we want to switch this back to update level by the way so we're going to import current plane the reference plane we're importing to is level 2 and now by going back to update level we can you basically have to toggle between these two to get this <laughs> shown so if I go back to current plane you can see I can import beams columns walls slabs tendons if you wanted to import tendons releases associated with components like columns or beams openings, if you have uh, reinforcement, um, user-defined reinforcement, we can also import that. So we're going to import everything here, including load cases. So dead load, we're going to import as applied forces. Hyperstatic, we are not going to import because we're going to resolve the global model in Adapt uh, Builder. So we don't need to re-import hyperstatic. I'll just leave that to none. Live load, I'll import as applied forces. Pre-stressing is similar to hyperstatic and self-weight is also similar. We, we're going to resolve for self-weight globally so we don't need to import it as a reaction or an, as an applied load. Um, under combinations, I'll just go ahead and import all combinations. We only need to do this once. Okay, so we're importing two reference plane 2 from current plane from model 2 and I'll say OK. It tells me as a warning, we already have a load combination called initial. Do we want to uh, replace the existing one? And I'll just say yes. We're going to replace it. And the modeling window will open. And if I go back to default and zoom extents, we have our model shown. Okay, so this, this is the imported level 2. If I go to a side view, you can see the the, the uh, model on the side and if I go here to 
um, visibility, blue eyeglasses called view settings. If we turn on the reference planes, we can see this is imported to level two. If I go to multi-story mode, we have three and four above. Okay, so so there's the first level being imported. If I um, go ahead and save that, and now I'll navigate up one level, just so I'm at the level I'm working on. So I'll go up to level three, and again, you can see here we're on level three. So we'll do the same thing for this level. I'll go to File, Import, IMP, Level 3 IMP, and I'll toggle between these. That allows me to select everything in current plane. Remember, level 3 is also modeled at the current plane because it stems from a single level model using the default uh, level assignments. Let me go back and do this. select everything that I want to import. I don't need to merge slabs. I do want to import load cases. So we'll import applied only for dead, live. And by the way, we're not mapping to existing load load cases you can see here your load combos include the dead underscore load so we if we map to dead load without the underscore then we have to reassign all the factors in the combo so that's why I'm not mapping these so I'll import those I do not need to import the combinations again that's already been done I'll say import none and I'll make sure that this is set to level 3 and I'll say OK again I'll zoom extents and I'll go to the default display and if I turn on the global model you can see let me turn on default display again you can see the levels are stacked and if I go to the render model option the teapot those are the two levels that are currently imported okay finally we'll go back to single level I'll go up to level 4 file import using IMP and <clears throat> finally we get to the last level here we'll go back to current plane we're going to import to level 4 I'll select my components and then again my load my loads that I want to import uh, we'll do live load and import none for load combinations. Turn off merge slabs, say OK. I'll go to default display and zoom extents. Okay, now if I go back to, to global mode, now again I have my, I think, I don't know what this is, let me check, that's a patch load. So I'll turn off my, I'll go back to default just so it shows components. This is now my model, my global model. So if I go back to the teapot, I have a multi-story model built from the three levels. Okay, so to validate the model, we'll go over here to analysis and in adapt, it's under FEM, we're gonna mesh, or under adapt builder 17, it's under FEM, the FEM pull down will mesh this um, using the mesher. It's telling me there are tendons outside of slab. So that, that's okay. That's pretty simple to fix. We'll turn on the slab, um, the tendons here. And for example, this slab, let me turn on the linearized, I'll turn off spline tendons just to maybe make this correlate with the 17 model. I don't know if it's spline or not in this particular set, but this this tendon is out of the slab. Let me go back and turn spline back on. Okay, so this really needs to be moved. So if I move this swerve point over now, that should be in the slab. If I look at this endpoint, that's also out of the slab, it looks like. So I'll select this tendon here and just use trim extend see what's going on with this it 
this one here looks to be out of the slab. Uh, let me use snap to nearest, so I'll just snap that one there. And then this one also, here it's actually going through an opening, so I could use my swerve points to fix that. Um, I was seeing tenons stacked on top of each other, so that's why I toggled between global and single. So if I select this one and just do the option for trim and extend tendons, We'll make sure that that's in the slab. Okay, so on the end it's okay. Here we're going to add a swerve point, so I'll do a swerve point one and two, let's say. But this needs to be set to spline, and so it is. Let's see where those swerve points are. Ah, here we go. Okay, so once the tendons are fixed, we, we can go back and mesh the structure. All right, and the objective here really is to, to be able to mesh the model and run the model. So we're going to run this under just some basic load combination. I'll go back to loading, um, load combos, and we have, for example, service total. These are the load combinations that were um, imported. Now you'll notice that number one, two, three, four, and five, or excuse me, one, two, three, four, those are the default combinations that were saved when we created the global model. So technically those are not required, nor do they map to the right load cases. For example, this is set to one times dead load without the underscore. So for these I'm actually going to delete, and these are the combinations that are imported. So I'll run this for service total, for example. We'll go here to uh, the service total. I could also pick you know, one that might be self-weight only, just for the most simplistic form. And um, when we go to analyze, I'll go to analysis, execute. You can see there's some load cases that are not mapped to um, that are not mapped to combinations. It says dead load one, point load, uh, dead load one, point load, and this goes all the way through to live load one. So there's several point loads that are labeled as dead load one or live load one. If you go back to loading cases, you'll see that you have dead load without the underscore, live load without the underscore. Those are the two default reserved load cases those are not assigned currently and then you have dead load one or excuse me dead load underscore live load underscore then one and two the one and two come from the import of the um, of the load cases that were imported for levels three and four so when you import a set of loads the program always counts up and uses a counter on top of the existing load case. That's why we get the one and the two. So how do we how do we fix this? Well before we run this let's go ahead and do that. I'll go back and turn off just the mesh and I'm going to turn on I want to display my loads so I'll go to the visibility blue eyeglasses and I'll go to loads and you see for point load I do have dead loads one, two, one and two for live load. I have the same for line and the same for patch. I'll turn on first the point, line, and patch for dead load 1. And also for dead load 2, both of these. And I'm going to select everything. By window selecting, we're just basically selecting all of our loads. That's all we really need to select here. but it's easy to window select and then I'll go to modify item properties or modify selection as it's called in version 18. In modify item properties I'm going to change the load case name from 
dead load one and two to just dead underscore load. That basically reclassifies them as what they were in each of the individual models. So that's that's easy enough. We'll call those dead loads. I'll go back, turn on the live loads, and I'll do live load one and two. Display those, select all of them, go back to modify them, and we're going to modify these loads as live load, but we're using the live underscore load. Okay, and that's done. So if we go back to the load case library, you can see we can actually remove one and the two designation because we no longer have loads assigned to those those classifications. If you wanted to, you could select dead and live. These are the reserved, but I can't delete those. I can deselect them here to ignore them, basically. So I'll deselect the reserved, and now I'm left with the two imported load cases that were, in, that were brought in from the individual levels. Okay, now we should be able to run the model. So we'll go to Analysis, Execute, I'll select that first combo, for example. Notice we don't get a warning at this stage. Okay, so that analysis is done. If I go select yes, um, we're going to select FEM view analysis results in version 17, or in this version, I'll go to the view analysis results viewer. And we're going to just take a cursory look at the at the deflected shape. So this is this is my multi-story model under those service loads and if we turn on the Z translation, the 3D uh, view, we are going to see some um, deformed shape and the, the purpose here is just to make sure that the connectivity is established and clearly it looks like everything here is connected so uh, the stability warning would also give some indication of whether or not something is wrong in terms of the connectivity. But um, that's that's the process um, to combine several files. Again, just, just be make sure you establish your levels up front in the global model and make sure of the selections you're making when you import each of the individual uh, IMP files. If you have any questions, please contact support at adaptsoft.com and we'd be happy to help uh, uh, out in any way we can.